headlines, immigration officials collect bribe from illegal aliens, Comptroller General alleges. Presidential Advisory Council hails conviction of Farouk Lawang. President Joe Biden suffers first defeat in U.S. Senate. Hello and thanks for joining us. I am Hussein Usman with the news update. Comptroller General of Nigeria Immigration Service, Mohamed Babandede, says some immigration officers are compromising national security by collecting bribes from foreigners to allow them stay illegally. Babandede said this in Katana, where he engaged traditional rulers to detect foreigners coming in and out of country without travel documents. Illegal aliens from neighboring countries find their way into, the Ni into Nigeria by paying bribes to security men at the nation's borders. Mouths are still wagging nine years after the scandal that rocked the House of Representatives' investigation into fuel subsidy fraud. The chairman of the ad hoc then ad hoc investigating committee for Rook Lowang is sentenced to seven years imprisonment for receiving bribe from billionaire oil magnate Femi Otidola. An FCT High Court sitting in Apo, presided over by Justice Angela Otaluka, found Lowang guilty of all three counts that bordered on bribery in the case which had lingered since 2012. Chairman, Presidential Advisory Council on Anti-Corruption, Professor Itse Sage, and a Keno-based legal practitioner, Abba Hikima, are optimistic that the conviction of Farouk Lowang suggests that corrupt public officials in Nigeria have no hiding place, no matter how long it takes. Yes, well, I, I think it's a positive development. As a lot of commentators have said, uh, the wheels of justice grind slowly, but it certainly grind to finality, to an end. So maybe what we should be talking about is how to make those wheels grind faster. But the end result is a good example to the public that nobody is above the law and that anybody who engages in this type of negative activity that impacts so badly on the population and uh, our development on welfare, surely we end up facing the law and uh, facing justice. If you give, you two, you are, you are guilty normally. But in this case, from what I can gather, it was the giver who uh, exposed the whole uh, illegal uh, agreement. So if the giver also acts as the uh, whistleblower, so to speak, then there can be no, no liability on his part. If you look at this judgment, you would see that the judgment has lasted for close to nine or ten years, you know, from the time this um, uh, the whole thing was discovered to yesterday where the judgment was passed. Uh, it, it tells us that no matter how long, you know, a case pended or no matter how long a case is delayed in court, uh, finally justice uh, will be able to be done uh, to the larger society because justice in the criminal case is not just for the for one person, it's for Nigeria, it's for Nigeria and Nigerians uh, at large. So that is, a, in short, what it means. And it means uh, the extended tentacles of the law will be able to find you wherever you go. So it should tell our leaders that they have been trusted uh, with our resources and that they should manage those uh, uh, trusts well. And if they refuse to do that, uh, they will be uh, caught uh, in several ways. Before now, uh, evidence that is found uh, or that is procured uh, somehow improperly, uh, it's not admitted. Uh, it's not ad admissible in court, you know. But after the passage uh, of the Evidence Act 2011, especially Section 14 of that law, uh, it is saying uh, the judge has discretion to admit uh, improperly obtained evidence. For example, if you look at this case, you could see that uh, some cameras were planted in the house of uh, of Otedola. Uh, and then when uh, Farouk Law was in the house, uh, he was caught by the video 
actually receiving a bribe in, in form of dollars, and then he was t uh, stocking some uh, same in, in several parts of his body. So uh, you could say that uh, it was actually uh, a kind of uh, trap, uh, or it was a kind of a uh, sting operation, like you call it. Still on the conviction of Farouk Lawang, public commentators attempt to analyze how a ranking lawmaker in the House of Representatives could sell his integrity for a $500,000 bribe. Deputy General Editor, Daily Trust newspaper, Abdulaziz Abdulaziz, adds his voice to the conversation. Uh, I think this is a, a testimony that the wheels of justice, even if it can get slow and uh, long coming, it's once it's set on motion, it surely would come. And uh, I think it is something that should send a very big signal to all Nigerians, especially politically exposed persons, that the justice can surely come. Uh, you cannot just imagine that it will continue to be the same old way, that perhaps uh, even though a lot of people have gotten away with it, but then once one is in the net, uh, he may not have escape route. So I think this is a very welcome development. It is a very good statement uh, to the government's uh, fight against corruption, to also the judiciary itself, because a lot of people uh, do not have hope uh, or confidence in the judiciary as such, even though the maxim says that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. So this, I think, is something that brings back hope in the anti-corruption drive, as well as in the ability of the judiciary to dispense uh, justice. Uh, of course, it's not really good that uh, this is taking quite a long time, because nine years is a long time, uh, you know, uh, for a case to be dispensed at the level of what is called the trial courts, that is the high court, because, you know, this case can still be appealed to the Court of Appeal and then to the Supreme Court. But at least for it to have gotten to this level is uh, a tremendous success, uh, even though, of course, it could have been much better in terms of speed and, and all that. So, as I said, I think this is a very good statement. It's something that gives hope uh, to anti-corruption campaigners, to also especially uh, a section of the uh, people along the chain of criminal justice that are often forgotten, that is the investigators. Uh, a lot, it takes a lot of personal, sacri personal sacrifice as well as uh, effort and hard work for investigators to build a case, uh, especially a corruption case that will scale through the process of judicial scrutiny into, well, you know, winning, getting conviction. So I think it's a big congratulations to also those who work on the case. Well, uh, now uh, you talked about nine years, you know, uh, being uh, such a long time for the conviction. Mm. Now, would you say the Nigerian justice system is slow? Yeah, actually it is because um, for a case, uh, you know, one case that is not even really complicated because this is almost like a straightforward case and then it took this long to be, to be dispensed of, uh, it's really long. But of course there are cases or there were cases that took much longer time, like the case of former Abia State Governor Oju Uzokalu and the rest. Um, it's not a good testimony to our judicial process. Of course the uh, the uh, judicial officers, the judges and administrators of justice always talk about uh, the burden of work on them as in the congestion in the courts and all that as a factor. But also don't forget that a lot of times there are instances of uh, delay tactics by the dependents in cases like this where they keep appealing uh, even any little issue within the trial, just so that they can buy time. But uh, I think, uh, especially with the arrival and oper operationalization of the ACJA, that is the Crim uh, Administrative of Criminal Justice Act 2015, I think we should have more speed, speedier trials, in, especially in corruption cases, because as the saying by the 
uh, respected uh, retired Supreme Court justice uh, that justice is a three-way traffic. That it's not only it's not a one-way thing. Justice is also justice to the public. Justice to the public means that the public should see justice being done in matters that affect them because matters of corruption are matters of public interest and uh, dispensing such matters in good time also gives the public hope and confidence in the judiciary. Former Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai will resume duty as Nigeria's ambassador to Benin Republic anytime from now. Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Onyema presented the letter of credence to the ex-service chief whose appointment many see as a reward for his exploits in the Boko Haram war. Similarly, former Chief of Defense Staff General Abayo Miyoluni Shake is also given his letter of credence as Nigeria's ambassador to the Republic of Cameroon. Coming up after the break, plans for 2022 Hajj. Do you stay with us. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Located around the Shehu's Palace in Maiduguri, Dr. Babaganawa Kil Memorial School was inherited from the Kashim Shetima administration with major infrastructure. The Zulum administration completed and remodeled existing structures and built new ones from scratch. The higher Islamic school is now equipped with 60 air-conditioned classrooms, four laboratories, administrative building, a spacious auditorium and sporting facilities. This school was one of those commissioned by President Muhammad Buhari to the glory of God for educational growth, for a productive population and Borno's promising future. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakub Isa, and I'm not a bit of Jiji. I mean, I'm not a bit of Jiji. 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 I'm not a bit Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Here's a recap of our top stories. Comptroller General vows to deal with immigration personnel who collect bribe. Groups applaud Farouk Lowen's conviction. And now to more stories. Kabi State Governor Abubakar Bagudu has met with President Muhammad Buhari to brief him on rescue efforts for students of Federal Government College Burni Yauri, abducted by bandits last Thursday. The governor says security agencies and other stakeholders are collaborating to bring an end to banditry in the state. I explained to him that the security agencies have mobilized and are doing a great job assisted by the military, the, the Air Force, the police, civil defense, vigilante, and community leaders. And they are still at it, and they are doing a great job, but we need more support by all Nigerians, and in fact all, to ensure that 
we give them our maximum cooperation to finish what they have started. National Hajj Commission of Nigeria says the cancellation of Hajj 2021 for all foreign pilgrims should be seen as an act of God and intending pilgrims have the option of taking back their deposits or wait till next Hajj. The commission is already making plans for 2022 Hajj exercise. Mardia Umar has more. Authorities in Saudi Arabia had earlier announced 60,000 pilgrims will perform 2021 Hajj out of which 45,000 are international. However, spiking COVID-19 infections prompted the government to limit the number to only Saudi residents. The announcement is made after serious analysis on the current pandemic situation in Saudi Arabia and in all the hard participating countries. Following the ban, the National Hajj Commission, Nahkan, wants state program welfare agencies to refund deposit to all intending programs without delay. But those who desire to leave the money till next year could do so. After the cancellation, Nakon urged uh, programs who wanted their refunds to go for it, to ask, make a request. In fact, since 2020, uh, 2020 that's what happened after cancellation of Hajj 2020. Nakon urged programs to collect their monies if they want to. But for those who wanted to roll over, it will be rolled over and um, they will be given priority uh, for the 2021 Hajj. So it's still the same thing. Um, back in 20, uh, 2020, I think only 5% of pilgrims requested for a refund out of those who made the deposits. Um, currently, uh, we don't have any data of those uh, going forward to collect their monies, but um, for those who wanted, uh, who want to still roll over, uh, they they are assured that um, they will be given priority in 2021. Nakon and the states are planning because we have to strategize to see how we we'll, uh, make their funds more profitable. So that instead of remaining dormant for the uh, for for a while, we are trying to see how we'll make it uh, profitable uh, for them. The ban placed on foreign pilgrims as a result of COVID-19 pandemic is effectively limiting incomes of tour and travel agencies as well as hat operators in Nigeria. Martia Omar, Trust TV News, Abuja. The need for Keno residents to excavate blocked drainages which could contribute to flooding is stressed as the rainy season sets in. Houses close to water canals face flood on an annual basis, prompting the Keep Keno Clean campaign to sensitize residents on environmental sanitation. The vast urban population of Kano State is creating more refuse than what garbage collectors can handle. Tons of waste piled up on streets is fast becoming a common sight. The Keep Kano Clean Week is at day four. The apparent danger that inadequate sewage disposal and public defecation poses to public health raises concern. <laughs> Rainy season started recently, but see what's happening to our roads. People dispose domestic waste in drainages. This causes a problem for us. I am appealing to the public to stop using waste to block waterways. Some Kano residents admitted that they are not aware of the campaign. However, they realize the urgent need to check illegal waste disposal. I didn't know that there was an ongoing campaign. Sincerely, such campaign is necessary because the way we dispose waste is not good and people are contacting diseases in this raining season. The government is supposed to look into this problem because the rains have come down. If nothing is done before the rains become heavy, we will be in serious problems. May Allah make them act before anything happens. 
The expectation after day seven is that those involved in indiscriminate dumping of domestic and industrial waste will desist from the act. Abdelaziz Ibrahim, Trust TV News, Kano. And with that, we move on to the foreign scene where U.S. President Joe Biden has suffered his first defeat in the Senate as his election reform bill is blocked by Republican Party senators. The bill seeking to make it easy for Americans to vote is deadlocked 50-50 along party lines. 60 votes majority is required to advance any legislation. And in sports, Germany can secure a place in the last 16 of Euro 2020 on Wednesday if it beats Hungary. Defending champions Portugal are at risk of crashing out despite a prolific start to Group F by Cristiano Ronaldo. France top uh, the group with four points heading into their final game against Portugal, a repeat of the Euro 2016 final despite an overwhelming 1-1 draw with bottom side Hungary in Budapest. Germany and Portugal are locked on three points apiece, but Joaquim Lewis' side crucially have the head-to-head -head edge following a thrilling 4-2 win in Munich. Portugal began their campaign with a 3-0 win against Hungary as Ronaldo became the leading scorer in European Championship history, but Fernando Santos watched his team ripped apart by Germany last Saturday. Enjoy this kicker of a talent who can do practically anything with a ball on his head. <laughs> It's a wrap on the news updates. Don't forget to follow us on socials at Trust TV News. I am Hosseina Usman. Thanks for watching.